Honorable Residents of North Hills Health and Rehab Center. My name is Emily and I am a member of Our Lady of Mount Carmel Junior Ladies of Charity. The video you are about to watch was made possible by other high school students and the Junior Ladies of Charity. They have each come up with creative ways to brighten your holiday by either reading Christmas readings or singing a Christmas song. We hope you enjoy the video. My name is Olivia and I'm going to be reading The Legend of the Christmas Tree by Lucy Wheelock. Two little children by sitting by the fire on one cold winter's night. At all, all at once they heard a timid knock at the door and one ran to open it. There outside in the cold and in the darkness stood a child with no shoes upon its feet and clad with thin ragged garments. He was shivering with cold and he asked to come in and warm himself. Yes, come in, cried both the children. You shall have a place by the fire. Come in. They drew the little stranger to their warm seat and shared their supper with him and gave him their bed while they slept on a hard bench. In the night, they were awakened by strains of sweet music and looking out, they saw a band of children in shining garments approaching the house. They were playing on golden harps and the air was full of melody. Suddenly, the stranger child stood before them, no longer cold and ragged, but clad in silvery light. His soft voice said, I was cold and you took me in. I was hungry and you fed me. I was tired and you gave me your bed. I am the Christ child wandering through the world to bring peace and happiness to all good children. As you have given me, so may, so may this tree every year give rich fruit to you. So saying, he brought a tree branch from their fir tree near the door and planted, in, and planted it in the ground and then disappeared. But the branch grew into a great tree and every year bore wonderful golden fruit for the kind children. I hope you enjoyed the story and Merry Christmas. I will be singing the traditional Christmas song, Deck the Halls. Deck the halls with bells of holly, fa la 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 Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 John, we now are gay apparel. Fa la 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 la. Troll the ancient old tide carol. Fa la 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 la. The blazing you'll be for us. Fa la 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 la. Strike the harp and join the chorus. Fa la 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 la. Follow me in merry measure la 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 While I tell of the old tight treasure la 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 Hello, my name's Elise and I will be reading the letter Yes, Virginia, There is a Santa Claus. Merry Christmas! Yes, Virginia, There is a Santa Claus. Eight-year-old Virginia O'Hanlon wrote a letter to the editor of the New York Sun, and the quick response was printed as an unsigned editorial, September 21st, 1897. The work of veteran newsman Francis Farsilis Church has since become history's most reprinted editorial, appearing in part or whole in dozens of languages in books, movies, and other editorials, and on posters and stamps. Dear Editor, I am eight years old. Some of my little friends say there is no Santa Claus. Papa says, if you see it in the sun, it is so. Please tell me the truth. Is there a Santa Claus? Virginia, your little friends are wrong. They have been affected by the skepticism of a skeptical age. They do not believe except they see. They think that nothing can be which is not comprehensible by their little minds. All minds, Virginia, whether they be men's or children's, are little. In this great universe of ours, man is a mere insect, an ant. In his intellect, as compared with the boundless world about him, as measured by the intelligence capable of grasping the whole truth of knowledge. Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. He exists as certainly as love and generosity and devotion exist. And you know that they abound and give to your life its highest beauty and joy. Alas, how dreary it would be the world if there was no Santa Claus. It would be as dreary as if there were no Virginias. 
There would be no childlike faith then, no poetry, no romance to make tolerable this existence. We should have no enjoyment except in sense and sight. The eternal light with which childhood fills the world would be extinguished. Not believe in Santa Claus. You might as well not believe in fairies. You might get your papa to hire men to watch all the chimneys on Christmas Eve to catch Santa Claus. But even if they did not see Santa Claus coming down, what would that prove? Nobody sees Santa Claus, but that is no sign that there is no Santa Claus. The most real things in the world are those that neither men nor children can see. Did you ever see fairies dancing on the lawn? Of course not, but that's no proof that they are not there. Nobody can conceive or imagine all the wonders there are unseen and unseeable in the world. You may tear apart the baby's rattle and see what makes the noise inside, but there is a veil covering the unseen world, which not the strongest men, nor even the united strength of all the strongest men that ever lived could tear apart. Only faith, fancy, poetry, love, romance, can push aside that curtain and view and picture the supernal beauty and glory beyond. Is it all real? Ah, Virginia, in all this world, there is nothing else real and abiding. No Santa Claus? Thank God he lives, and he lives forever. A thousand years from now, Virginia, nay, ten times ten thousand years from now, he will continue to make glad the heart of childhood. Hi, I'm Kaylee, and I'm going to be reading to you the gospel acclamation of the birth of Jesus according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you who is Messiah and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those who, on whom his favor rests. I wish you all great health during this holiday season. Happy holidays. Hello. My name is Katherine McGoey and I'm a ninth grader at North Hills High School. The video that you're about to see is myself playing the piano and singing along to Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. So I hope you have a wonderful Christmas, a wonderful winter, and a great new year. So thank you and I hope you enjoy.
Our Lady of Mount Carmel. I'm going to be reading The Night Before Christmas. It is one of my favorite holiday stories. It was the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon will be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama, in her kerchief, and I in my cap, had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window, I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up my sash. The moon on the breast of the new-fallen snow gave a luster of midday to the objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles his courses they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop, the courses they flew, with the sleigh full of toys, and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkle, I heard on the roof, the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed in all fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes how they twinkled, his dimples how merry, his cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of his pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink in his eye and the twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to work. He filled all the stockings and turned with a jerk. And lying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney he rose. He sprung to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like a down of a thistle. But I heard him exp exclaim as he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. I hope you enjoyed the night before Christmas. Have a Merry Christmas. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. On behalf of the Our Lady of Mount Carmel Junior Ladies of Charity, we wish you a very blessed Christmas season. Merry Christmas. Tis the season to be jolly. Merry Christmas. I wish you all great health during this holiday season. Happy holidays. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas, a wonderful winter, and a great new year. Have a Merry Christmas.